I have added a readme to the readme's folder that we will use to guide us through this process. And we will begin by installing a Python package onto our system by the name of poetry. Here's the command you can use to download poetry. I have already installed it, but I will run through these steps nonetheless. After you download poetry, you should add this command to your shell initialization script. For example, if you're using bash, add it to the .bash RC file, or if you are using zshell, add it to the .zshrc file. Then you can run this command to verify everything was installed correctly and print out the poetry version. You can then run this command to enable auto completion of poetry commands within your shell. And then we will use this command to integrate poetry into our project. This is a utility script. You'll see what I mean. I will accept the suggested response for each prompt. Except for this one, I will answer no. And this one, I will answer no. And I will answer yes to the generated pyproject.toml file. This in poetry land is like the package.json file in the Node.js world. We will now be using poetry to manage our dependencies, to run scripts against our project, to easily publish our code to the Python community, etc. And we no longer need this requirements.txt file, so it can be removed. Now that we have removed the requirements.txt file, let's reinstall our packages, but this time using poetry. The first thing we'll need to do is set up our virtual environment. The concepts of activation and deactivation still apply when using poetry. Here is the command for creating our virtual environment. You can see that a .vm file has been created, as well as you can see our prompt has changed. This is just like the experience we had when using product setup number one. The only difference is that the VM file that we created is now named the .vm file. So we can now install the third-party packages and they will be installed into the .vm folder. When they are done installing, we should be able to run a smoke test and verify that everything still works. Ta-da! Fantastic. Let's now play around with the pyproject.toml file to get a feel for what it does. We can open it up and start making some tweaks. Let's change the name of our project to be second setup save that now let's change the name of the only package we have configured at the moment to be source and let's add a script called main and we see that this script is going to run a main file or main module inside of the source package. So we will need to create a folder called source that represents the source package and move our main.py file into the source package. Now let's test this all out. In order for the changes in our pyproject.toml file to work, we will need to deactivate the current virtual environment, delete the .vm folder, and then we should be able to reactivate the virtual environment and our changes should take effect. That looks good. You can see that the prompt has now been updated. And let's reinstall our packages.
and we should be able to run our main script now. And hopefully everything works. Okay, so this is good. I'm happy this happened. So we need to export all of the files inside of our source package. And the way that we do that is via a underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py file. This is kind of like using an index.ts or index.js file when you're exporting modules from different parts of your node projects. And after we add this to the source package, which exports the main file or main module from it, we should then be able to run our main script. Voila, it works as expected. Now let's take a look at wrapping this up. We are going to add testing support. Then we are going to add auto formatting support. Then we're going to add auto reloading support and then take a quick look at the debugger and then finish. Here is how we set up automated testing. Let's close these files and install some dev dependencies. Dev dependencies are dependencies that you only need during development, not when the app is running in production. So let's install PyTest and let's install PyTest dash cov for the Node.js and Rails developers. PyTest is to Python what Jest is to Node.js or what RSpec is to Rails and pytest-cov is to Python what Istanbul is to Node.js or what simplecov is to Rails or Ruby. Now we can create a test directory to house all of our tests. PyTest will look for folders that begin with the name test and will look for files inside of said folders that begin with names test as well. And will scan the contents of those files for assertions that it will then report the success or failure of. So let's create a test file inside of the tests directory and populate it with this content. Save. And now we can run PyTest to get test reports. And here is how we get test coverage reports. For auto formatting, we will be using a package called black. It is extremely easy to use and set up. So we will install the black package as a dev dependency. And then we will integrate it with VS code by adding a dot VS code folder. And inside of this dot VS code folder, we will need to add a settings.json file. And then we will populate this settings.json file with this content right here. Copy, paste, save. Now let's take a look at what happens when we open up some of our source code and save it. You can see that black is auto formatting our code according to its formatting rules. So if we add some spaces here, you can see that it fixes it. For auto reloading, we're gonna do something that might be a little bit unconventional. We are going to use a Node.js tool. We're gonna to use Nodemon. Here is how we incorporate Nodemon. 
we have to create a package.json file for installing it into our project. Then we will install Nodemon as a dev dependency. Then we will add the node modules folder to our git ignore. Then we will add these scripts here to the package.json file. Save. And now let's test this out. npm run test. You can see that our test report has ran. And now let's see what happens when we edit one of our tests. It should automatically rerun our test report. So let's make this fail. Right. Let's make it pass again. Finally, let's take a quick look at debugging and then you will have a great overview of all of the features included in the second project setup. The way that you can do debugging with VS Code and Python is quite simple and easy. What you'll do is click on one of your files and you can place breakpoints to pause your code at different points by clicking on the line you want to pause at in the column to the left of the line number. So let's pause here, for example, and then VS Code is well integrated with the Python debugger and has a button or menu that will pop up here with two options for either running this file or debugging this file. We want to debug and it should pause here, right? We have paused at that point in the program. That's what that yellow line means.